Hello everyone, my name is Eduardo. I'm a solutions architect with Amazon Web Services. Today I have here with me Sanjay from IBM. Hello Sanjay. Hello. Uh, hello, my name is Sanjay Doifore. I'm a principal solutions architect with IBM. So we're going to talk today uh, about IBM Cloud Pack for Data. Uh, a lot of customers reach, uh, reach out to us and ask us, you know, how can they build new applications and new workloads with machine learning, you know, to build differentiation into their businesses, right, and improve uh, the quality of the data and the results that they can get from this. Sanjay, do you have some stories that you can share with us today about how Cloud Pack for Data is helping some of these customers, uh, you know, really differentiate their business? Yes, so we have a reference architecture we have implemented at a customer, and so we can talk about how this reference architecture helps predict patient outcomes, mm -hmm. uh, also uh, predicts uh, readmission rates, uh, and you can build a lot of models once you have the data. So let's take a look at this. Uh, we'll draw the reference architecture uh, stage by stage, and we'll provide an end-to-end -end story. So this is an implementation that you have done when Cloud Pack for Data on AWS for a healthcare industry? That's correct. Okay, so here we are looking at the data sources that we have in this particular scenario, right, where you're collecting data from uh, health devices uh, that's like patient vitals data, right? Exactly. So this could be like IoT devices that are hooked up in the hospital or uh, in the patient's home, right? So this could be a variety of healthcare device, okay. you know, health devices, IoT, or uh, some other traditional devices too. And I see here that you're also then collect, uh, connecting to data repositories uh, on an on-premises data center of some kind, right? Exactly. So this could be uh, on the top, uh, the databases could be in the hospital, the patient, uh, patient, patient databases, is, exactly, okay. yeah. All right. So. So the way that uh, I understand that we've discussed about this, right? So the, the, the way that we are collecting this, this information here, if we think about the connected devices, right? They are pushing data into AWS, and this data ends up in a, a Amazon Kinesis data firehose. Mm -hmm. And then from here, we do a process to do data validation, right? right? So if you see any issues in the quality of the data that's being collected, we are pushing. We are using Amazon SNS to send notifications out into the an API, right? That you have running on, on the on the on premises side of the equation, right? On the clinics and the hospital to reprocess this data, right? To send it across again, and then I understand that once this data has been verified, you know, we are pushing it into Amazon S3. It is from where uh, I believe Cloud Pack for Data is going to read this data to train the, 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 the ML models that you're building, correct? Right, so this is, uh, this we, we'll call this the landing bucket or the uh, raw bucket. It so has, this is for raw yeah. data. Correct. Okay. So once this data is there, so uh, that's where, you know, the cloud pack for data. So, it, so, uh, so cloud, cloud pack for data is a unified system for data and AI. So you can take data and infuse AI into it, and it's made up of multiple components in it. So let's talk about the first component in there. So as your data is in the raw bucket here, uh, this is uh, Watson Machine Catalog. It's an enterprise uh, data discovery tool. Uh, it's also a metadata repository. Okay. So who has access to what data, and it also discovers this data. So that will be helpful once, what's, once this data can be read by Watson Machine Catalog here. Okay. Then we can use Data Stage. So Data Stage is an ETL tool. Mm -hmm. So these both can work in concert, the Watson Machine Catalog and our Data Stage. So it can pull the data, the right data, and then you have developers here. They can build models using IBM Watson Studio. Okay. So these are AI models. Those are built. And once those models are built, they can be deployed using Watson Studio into Watson Machine Learning language. Okay. Uh, and so the Watson Machine Learning will deploy those models and it will generate these endpoints. Those endpoints will be then used by these healthcare applications to, to make predict, predictions. Right? Okay, so uh, these are inference endpoints that the healthcare application is using to predict the patient outcome. 
Exactly. And so the healthcare users use this healthcare application which will provide those predictions okay. to the end uh, users. And then I, I believe that you are combining into this equation here, then with Watson Knowledge Catalog, the data that's coming from the, the patient systems of, of records that are either on traditional databases or traditional applications, right? right? And you're combining this, then the IoT data with the patient the data, the patient history data, to generate this these predictions. That's exactly right. Okay. And so the data stage here is, per, is, is being used as an ETL to, to do data preparation to train the machine learning model, right? Exactly. So it will do some basic uh, formatting data prep. Uh, but the Watson machine catalog will also can apply rules as far as like data masking, okay. who has access, right? Okay, yes, so, because we're dealing with uh, sensitive patient information, right? Exactly. So the data, once data stage is prepared, then it also pushes into S3, right? So this would be something like the prepared data for our machine learning uh, training, right? Exactly. So this, this is like the curated data. Once okay. those machine uh, data stage has read, you have created these models. So this particular S3 bucket uh, could be your curated data that's mm -hmm. available for any of these applications to then read. Okay, and how does callback for data uh, in, uh, access uh, data repositories on AWS? It, does it have some kind of connectors that allow users to, to do that? Yes, so there are pre-built connectors to uh, IBMs, uh, AWS data sources, and also to third-party sources. Okay. Now, because we're talking about, uh, about dealing with, uh, you know, personal identifiable information and sensitive patient information. I understand that on this particular use case, you're also using yet another IBM solution to make sure that the environment is secure and there is no 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 threats or any, anything like that, right? So you want to talk a little bit about how you've done that? Yeah, so you're right, you know, security is extremely important. And also we want to figure out if there are any patterns, right? Uh, which are vary, varying from the normal. So there are, uh, we have IBM Q Radar. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a security product. And basically it analyzes data from the VPC flow logs here, and also from AWS CloudTrail. Okay. It reads those uh, logs and figures out their trends. Okay. If they vary from the normal, it will flag, let the security operators know. So this would, of this flow would be something like this, right? Where we have the uh, these logs being analyzed by Curator. Right. And then if you find anything out of the ordinary, if you find anything that's important, or, you know, if you uh, you generate an alert for security operators, then... Yes, exactly. The, so the security operators, they have access to the uh, SIM, uh, Curator SIM. And uh, Curator SIM is, it can you can build pre predictive models using that. Uh, it does proactive monitoring, uh, so it just makes sure that your environment is secure and anything that uh, is out of the normal will get flagged. Okay, so this is a very interesting implementation and you have this already running in production with customers, IBM yes. customers and AWS customers as well. That's right. Okay. And I see here that uh, the Cloud Pack for Data is running on uh, OpenShift. So Based on what I see here, you know, we can deploy Cloud Pack for Data on, on Rosa, on uh, Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS. That's correct. And how does that help uh, customers? So Rosa is a managed offering. Uh, so a uh, customer doesn't have to worry about patching or maintenance, any kind of regular day-to-day. Uh, -day. So they can offload that uh, to the Rosa service uh, and focus on creating strategic, innovative products, okay. right? Yes. All right, this is very, very interesting. Thank you, Sanjay. Really uh, like talking to you today. And thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Bye.